Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden with The Geek Group. Today we're hanging out here and we're talking about capacitors. This is something I get a lot of people writing in about is, can I use this capacitor for my Tesla coil? Can I use this capacitor for a ring launcher? All this stuff. Okay, I want to cover some, some real basics because capacitors are ubiquitous. They're everywhere. I, I just grabbed the first electronic device I could find sitting on the set. This is a high voltage power supply out of a transmitter. And if you look on here, there's a cap, 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 cap. I mean, they're all over the place. They're everywhere. However, because capacitors are so widely used, they're also very specialized. One of the things you need to realize is there are capacitors that work really, really well for Tesla coil use and capacitors that really don't. Now, I just wanted to cover some of the basics of how you can tell a pulse cap from not a pulse cap. In a Tesla coil operation, you want to use a pulse capacitor. And a lot of people think they can just grab any big capacitor and it'll work. This here is a standard electrolytic capacitor. It's a really good one. It's an inverter grade, which is pretty much the really good electrolytic capacitors. It's rated for 2,000 microfarads, 450 volts DC, made by Cornell Dublier. And we use a boatload of these in Thumper. Um, we have, we wire them four in series, 20 in a bank, and I think there's like eight or nine banks in Thumper. It's a lot. This will not work in Tesla coil use. What this will do is make a lot of heat internally self-destruct and because it's in a metal can, um, it'll heat up, build up a lot of pressure and then this little thing on top will blow out and start shooting electrolyte and everything all over the room. That's if you're lucky. If you're not lucky and you have one of the cheaper made capacitors that don't have a vent, it'll detonate and spew electrolyte and metal and shrapnel and guts all over. The, it's bad. Bad, bad, bad. So big lytics like this, great for filter caps. Um, for a lot of other things, you gotta be careful. Technically, we shouldn't use these for Thumper. The fact that they've lived this long is an amazing feat. Um, another type of cap that a lot of people see are these. These are really easy to get because power companies, yeah, let's get this out of the way. Power companies throw these away all the time and they're really big, massive, capacitors. Rawr! This won't work for Tesla coils. Won't work for ring launchers either. The problem is it's not pulse rated. So it just, it won't work. The, the internal structure is really inefficient. It's designed for a totally different application. This is designed for power factor correction, which for anybody in normal residential living, power factor doesn't even matter. And all you guys spending a ton of money on power factor corrected uh, computer power supplies, yeah, you're idiots, ignore that, it doesn't matter. The consumer power isn't billed by power factor and the amount that those are actually fixing is so trivial you'll never notice it. Um, if you bought a box of Tic Tacs this month, you spent more money on the Tic Tacs than anything you saved on the power supply. But this is a big power factor correction cap and it has, no, uh, it has a bit of a label but it's all messed up and you can't read it. But yeah, the label just says that this doesn't have PCBs. So there you go. If you're collecting capacitors like this, watch out for ones that have PCBs. They're bad. Now, let's talk about caps that are pulse rated. First off, the best capacitors that we've ever seen for Tesla coil use aren't big giant ones. They're little itty bitty ones that you can hold in one hand. This little tiny capacitor. Now this capacitor is rated for 450 volts. It's huge, look at the size of that. It's also got 2,000 microfarads. This is only 0.1 microfarad, but it holds 2,000 volts. This is the classic 942C series Cornell Dublier capacitor, and this is the pinnacle of MMC technology. Guys all over the world are using these. We, in fact, have used 1,000 of these to build the largest MMC array in the world. It's right in the next room, in fact, and there'll be a video on that coming up soon. But this little tiny thing is what powers Gemini, Arcturus, Zeus, Sam, Mercury, all our big coils powered by these. And they work. And the cool thing is the way they work, they're self-healing. If you overvolt this cap, if you put 1,000 volts across this cap, you've just created a doorstop. However, these are made in internally with foil. Okay, 
and then the electrical connection goes off here. And then there's another piece of foil here, and they put them together and they roll them up like a burrito. And yeah, that's, that's the plates the capacitor. But the, the, the plates inside this, the foil they're made of, if it arcs from this one to this one by over voltage, because in between them is a thin sheet of plastic, when it hits, it makes a really big hole. It vaporizes it, just poof, it's gone. And in doing so, it creates a hole bigger than what the spark can travel across to arc out again. And if, it, and if it does travel across, it'll blow out more hole. These caps, we've taken these apart after years and years of abuse. And internally, they'll look like Swiss cheese, just holes everywhere. And they still work, and they're still within spec. They're great. It's an amazing bit of technology. This changed Tesla coil capacitors for everybody. Because before this, we had guys doing stuff like this. They were making their own capacitor. This capacitor was made in 2003 by um, R.S. Coppersmith, okay, a former Geek Group member. It, this is done by hand. It's, it's laminations of plastic and copper flashing. And this, this took a lot of work and a lot of time. There were guys rolling their own caps out of in big pipes with aluminum foil. And so oh, it was messy. It was nasty. You're full of oil. Thankfully, we don't have to do it anymore. These are great. They only cost a couple bucks a piece, and the Geek Group sells them. So we will help you get these if you need them. Every Tesla coiler out there should be using this. Now, I know you want to see the big one, because we've had a lot of people write in saying, we've heard about these gigantic, massive pulse capacitors you have. We just want to see one. All right. Normally, we don't unveil projects or parts of a project until it's actually built. But everybody's seen Thumper, and they've heard the rumors about Stomper, Thumper's big brother. I pulled out one of the Stomper caps just so we could show you guys. Check this out. Now, I'll grab this capacitor for scale. This is one of the, thump of the Stomper capacitors. We have 117 of these. Now, for all the science guys out there who are wondering, how big is it? Well, it weighs about 300 pounds. Um, this one's pretty, it's in stainless. This is the output electrode. This is the ground electrode. And here is the safety wire. This is a dog dish insulator because it looks like a dog dish. Now the rating on the capacitor, you can see here for yourself, here's the sticker. And you're like, I can't read it. Well, here's a close up of the sticker. And it is um, 5.8 microfarads. It's 60,000 volts DC rated. And in every pulse, it has an energy of 10,530 joules. Now, all the physics guys watching at home just went, whoa. Yeah, it's, it's a tiny god, basically. We have 117 of these. So if you would like to make a project, perhaps in electromagneto metal forming, or just crushing quarters, or have another idea for an interesting project that requires, oh my god, capacitors, let me know. Because we're, we're interested, and maybe you can come down and borrow a half dozen of these and build your project. Because these are not easy to get. And we put a lot of work into getting them. So yeah, there's your basics on what capacitors do and don't do in the Tesla coil world. What works, what doesn't. Stay away from the glass mics. I keep seeing guys that are writing in, hey, I got a whole bunch of, of these, these capacitors, and they're really cool, and they're great. And they say right inside, glass mic. Um, don't use them. They explode. They're, they're, you can't use the ceramic capacitors. You can't use the glass stuff. The RF energy in it, just they're really inefficient. They make a lot of heat. They blow up. They crack. They break. It's bad. Stick with these. They work great. I don't care if you buy them from us or not. In fact, currently, at the moment, we don't offer these for sale to the public. But we're going to be soon. We're getting back into the MMC capacitor market. And we're going to be selling them a lot cheaper than anybody else. So you can look into that. And if you can't afford these, that's fine. Tesla himself didn't have real capacitors. He did things using wine bottles and champagne bottles. And we're going to make a video in the next couple weeks of how you can make your own capacitors at home out of nothing more than old beer bottles, salt water, and motor oil. It's that easy. And it all fits in a five gallon bucket. It's, it's basic, simple stuff. And you can do this at home. So capacitors don't have to be the major nightmare of Tesla coiling anymore. You can you know, have the fun of wearing the groove in your thumb trying to wind your primary or secondary. So you guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden with the Geek Group. We'll have more for you next time. See ya.